What's up guys? Welcome to Visualization. My name is Nestor Elgantel and today we're going to learn about DAX basics in Power BI Desktop. Hey, but before we get started, please hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss anything. So here's the content. We're going to go from what's DAX to creating a visualization in Power BI Desktop. Let's keep going. What is DAX? DAX stands for Data Analysis Expressions. So it's a collection of functions, operators, and constants that can be used in a formula or expression to calculate or return one or more values. So what are the prerequisites to succeed in DAX? We have to be familiar with creating formulas in Excel. We have to be familiar with using Power BI Desktop. We have to be familiar with basic concepts of measures and calculated columns as well. If you're not familiar with measures and calculated columns yet, so don't worry, we will learn a little bit about that as well here in this tutorial. Let's keep going. So here we have a simple syntax. So what you guys can see here is basically a measure and its parts. So number one, that's the measure name. Number two, that's the equal sign operator. Number three, that's the DAX function. And this case is average. Number four, of course, those are parentheses that surround an expression containing arguments. Number five, that's the reference table. And in this case, this is data two. Number six, that's the reference column. In this case, this is population. So this is just a basic or simple syntax. So let's go to the next slide. So here we have a more complex syntax. This is complex because we have a measure inside of another measure. So what you guys can see here, this is the first measure that we already created before, right? If we go back to the previous slide, this is the first measure that we have, the average population. But then here, that measure is inside of this measure right here, which is the average population greater than year 2000. So let's go through its parts real quick. So number one, the measure name. Number two, this is the equal sign operator. Number three, this is the DAX function. So the calculate function is one of the most popular functions in DAX. So number four, those are parentheses that surround an expression containing arguments. Number five, that's a measure, right? So in this case, we already mentioned that this is average population, and we already saw this measure before in the previous slide. Number six, that's a comma that separates the first expression argument from the filtered argument. Number seven, that's the fully qualified reference column. Number eight, this is a particular value, in this case, year 2000, and this is a filter. So the calculate function right here, let's go through this real quick. So the calculate function, we have right here an expression argument. In this case, this is a measure. And then we also have a filter right here. The calculate function is very similar to the E function in Excel. So let's keep that in mind, okay? So now let's learn about functions. They are predefined formulas that perform calculations by using specific values called arguments in a particular order or structure. This is something really important, guys. A DAX function always references a complete column or a table. This is really important. Let's go to the next slide. Function categories in DAX. So we have right here different categories. So we have date and time, time intelligence, information, logical, mathematical, statistical, text, parent child, other, and table. And of course, each category has its own functions, okay? For example, for time intelligence, we have dates between, first date, last date. You guys can explore more about these functions, but for this tutorial, we're just listing them, okay? Let's keep going. Number seven, let's learn how to create a calculated column. So we have right here two different ways. So the first one, select table, right click, and then select new column. The other way right here is 
go into modeling and then select new column right here you guys can see two different screenshots and you can have that as a reference so let's go back real quick to our power bi desktop so in that way we can learn by doing so here are two tables and these two tables are in the fields area let's say that we want to create a new column or add a new column inside of data one so what we do is basically select data one and then right click and right here we have the option new column and then if we want to learn about the second option this is basically going to modeling and then right here we have new column as well that's how it works so very straightforward guys so now let's go back to the presentation now we have an example here the example says add a calculated column inside of data one and this column should be called population growth rate let's copy this real quick right here so we have right here the years that we have to calculate the growth rate between 1950 and 2013. So let's keep that in mind, please. And also here we have the formula. So let's keep that in mind as well. Now let's go back to Power BI Desktop and let's start playing. Ah, there is something here really important. First, verify the right relationship between tables. So let's do that. So we have right here two different tables, data one and data two and we have right here data. So now let's go to check the relationships. Right here, we already see relationships. Okay, let's double check. This is country and then right here. So country, country, okay. So in this case, we have right here number one for data one. So it means that these values, in this case, countries is unique. And then for data two, we might have more than one value. So that's how it works. So now we know that these tables are connected, having as a reference country. So now let's go to data and let's create our first column. And we're gonna use, of course, in this case, we're gonna use data one. So right click and then new column. We need to name this column, okay? So we should name this column as population growth rate and then equal, do you guys remember the formula? It is basically, this should be 2013. Let's select 2013 right here, top click, divided by 1950, right? So 1950 right here, and then minus one. That should be the population wealth rate between these two years. So here we have two options. We can press enter or we can click right here on this check mark. Let's do that. And now that works, right? After we do that, we can go and then we can edit this one right here as well, because we know this should be percentage, right? Percentage right there. We only wanna see just one decimal. So just one decimal. And then just double check right there. So we are good now. And now let's make sure that this new column works. So let's go to data one and let's look for the new column. So it's right here. Besides its name, there is a small screen. So that represents a new column. So let's drag this into this area and let's see what happens. Let's play right here with this information. So the growth rate should be right here in value. And then right here, we can select just the average. Boom. There you guys have it. So it works, so we are good now. So now let's go back to our presentation. Number eight. Now we're gonna learn how to create a calculated measure. We also have right here two different ways. So these two ways are very similar to what we just saw for calculated columns. So basically, if we go back to our Power BI desktop, let's say that we wanna create a measure right here. So right click, new measure. So that's the first way. And then the other way is going to modeling. And then right here, you guys can see the new measure icon. Hit this option, and then you can start creating a new measure. So that's how it works. Let's go back to the presentation. There is a tip right here. A measure has a calculator icon beside it. We saw it and we will see it later as well. Okay, so here's an example. Let's create three different measures inside of data two. 
let's use average and max functions. So let's do that. Let's go back to Power BI Desktop. Right here, right click, new measure. Let's create our first measure. So let's call this average population, okay? And then equal, and right here, the average population, of course, average. So now let's select our table, which is data two, right? And then data two population, because we want to find the average population. And let's close parenthesis. And then let's hit right here, this check mark. Boom, so it works. And let's make sure that this is working. Let's drag this new measure into this area. It's working, so that's perfect. So now let's create another measure. Right click again, new measure. And in this case, we're gonna name this new measure as average population greater than year 2000. And then equal. And in this case, we're gonna use a calculate function. So the expression is gonna be the average, in this case, this measure, the average population. So the filter is gonna be year greater than 2000. So we're gonna type right here 2000, and then let's close it right now. It looks fine. And let's hit this option right here. And apparently it works perfectly fine. So let's double check. So we can see right here, the new measure. So remember there is a calculator here. So this means this is a new measure. Let's drag this into the area. Boom, so it works fine. So now let's create another measure real quick. And in this case, we're gonna call this max population, okay? So now we're gonna use the max function, open parentheses. And then in this case, we're looking into data two and then population, okay? Let's close parentheses and let's hit this option right here. So it seems like it's working fine. So let's drag this into this area just to double check that it's working. It's working. So perfect. We have created three different measures inside of data two. So now let's go back to our presentation. So now we're going to learn how to edit a measure. We're going to learn how to delete, how to add a new line, how to add notes, how to delete, double click on a measure and then select delete. Very straightforward. Add a new line. We need to press shift plus enter. All right, let's do that. First, let's say that we want to delete this measure. Right click, delete measure. That's how it works. So now let's say that we want to edit this measure right here, the average population. We click on this new measure, and then right away we can see right here the formula that we use, right? So let's say that we want to add a new line right here. So shift enter, and let's see what happens. So we create a new line. Now let's say that we want to add a comment here. Let's press Alt Shift A, and then automatically we can add a comment right there. So for those who wanna check this formula later, so they know that there is a comment there and they can go to that comment, right? So in this case, I just wrote, this is the average population greater than year 2000. That's how it works, guys. Now it's done. Let's hit this check mark right here. So now let's go back to our presentation. So now let's create a visualization and let's use calculated columns and measures. So remember that we created three different measures. Let's delete this real quick before we start playing with this. So remember that we created three different measures and also we added a new column with a DAX formula. Let's use first the added column. Let's go right here and then let's drag this into this area and now let's move population growth rate into value and then right here let's click right here and we care about the average right so that's what we have and now let's add country here into the axis so that's how it works guys so you guys can see this nice chart boom so now let's use the measures to create a visualization so right here Let's select just the average population. Boom, there it is. So now let's pick country. Boom. So now let's drag average population greater than year 2000. And let's drag this into the same chart right here. Boom, awesome, right? Now let's drag max population into this chart as well. Boom, so we have right here three different measures 
in just one chart. So that's how it works. You can keep playing, right? So let's say that we wanna edit this chart real quick. So we don't wanna see the title. We're gonna do the same for four Y axis right here. We don't wanna see the title right here. So that looks better. And then uh, let's see the general title. We don't wanna see the general title right there. So that looks better. Now let's say that we only wanna see the top 10 countries right here. So let's select this one right here top 10 countries so remember that we are just playing with this information okay and let's select right here population into value and then let's apply the filter boom so that's how it works guys we just created two different charts by using a calculated column and also by using three different measures i hope you guys enjoy this tutorial i know this was quite fast but remember this is just the beginning i will keep working on new tutorials about dax but this is a good beginning so now let's go back to our presentation what else we have right here bonus i know you guys love bonuses so let's create a table just for the measures this is how it works guys so let's say that we have huge amounts of data and then you can start creating measures right so in this case it's quite easy right we only have two tables here right so this is why creating a table for measures is really important. Let's say that we have 10 tables here. Remember that we only have two tables, but let's say that we have 10 tables or maybe 50 tables, right? And then we can start creating new measures. So after you do that, you have relationships, right? Between tables. And then we wanna start creating new visualizations. That's confusing. So that's why it's really important if we create a new table and then we can put every single measure inside of that table this is how it works let's go to home right here and then right here enter data and then we can name this table let's call this measure table just for example and then let's load this it's loading boom you guys have right here a new table so now this is how it works we have three measures right here and in this case we are selecting the average population measure and then go to modeling and right here, let's move this to measure table. Boom. See right here, under data two, we have just two measures. And let's keep doing the same thing for the other measures. And then right here, let's do the same for max population. Let's move this to measure table. Boom. Now we have all the measures in just one table, the measure table. As I said before, this is very useful if we have different tables and then we are creating different measures. So it's gonna be confusing. So that's why it's really important if we have all measures in just one table. That's how it works, guys. Let's go back to our presentation. That's it, guys. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe because you don't wanna miss anything, right? See you guys in my next tutorial.